So, you're thinking about joining the United States Army, huh? What's up my friends? Welcome to an all new video. In this episode, I'm kind of specifically focusing on joining the Army, even though I've kind of touched on the topic here and there in different videos, but not specifically in a dedicated video that tells you about what to do if you want to join the Army. I mean, I've talked about videos that, you know, are explaining boot camp, basic training, uh, OSIT. Uh, I've talked had videos that talk about your career path for being in the Army, but not specifically a video for those individuals that maybe are doing a YouTube search or a Google search for how to join the US Army. So if that's you, maybe you've landed on this video and now that's what I'm here to do, is hopefully give you an idea of what the process is like for you who's interested in joining the United States Army. Now, because I'm sure probably somewhere in the comments, someone will be asking, is this the same for the Marines? Is this the same for the Air Force? Maybe, there might be some subtle you know, changes or differences you know, here and there, but for the most part, yes. For the most part, a lot of the things are very similar for every branch, but I was United States Army, so I'm specifically talking about how to join the Army. Now, before we get started, if you are not already subscribed to this channel, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button, also clicking on that bell so you get alerts when new videos go live, including live streams, and become a part of the notification platoon. And with that being said, let's dive right into it and start off where it probably begins for your future Army career. And that typically starts off with obviously having some kind of interest in the military or the army for this matter for whatever reason, but also doing a little bit of research. Obviously, I have a lot of videos that can help you provide some other research into some reasons to join the army, maybe some reasons not to join the army, get a little bit of look at the lifestyle, checking out other army YouTubers or just simply maybe some blogs online or even maybe reaching out to try to talk to somebody who used to be in the military, maybe someone you know or maybe someone that you know's friend or family member or something like that. So doing a little bit of research is a good idea to kind of research, is this something you really want to do? And if so, what do you want to do? But then from there, it may kind of shift a little bit as far as what you should do next, because what comes next could be either taking the ASVAB, which is the test that kind of is like the placement test to determine your eligibility for the Army, as well as in the military, really, in that matter, too. But it also kind of determines what jobs would best fit you, what you would qualify for to do in the Army or the military, actually. Or your next step could be simply talking to a recruiter first to maybe get a little bit more information from an Army recruiter and then take the ASVAB. So those ones can definitely flip-flop here and there. But let's say if you're starting off with taking the ASVAB, you might be in high school still. Sometimes at high school they offer the ASVAB. Maybe recruiters come down and they make a scheduled time frame where maybe you get out of the class and you get to go take the ASVAB. That's how it was for me when I took the ASVAB. And you're able to take it. Now, before you take the ASVAB, I do recommend studying. So you want to study for the ASVAB. You want to try to get a high score, not just try to wing it because you're wanting to have all these jobs available to you to choose from. You don't want to have just be you know scraping the bottom of the barrel kind of a thing. Plus, if you have a good high score, that also makes you eligible for bonuses as well. If you just have a bare minimum score, sometimes that doesn't make you qualified for bonuses. You might be qualified for the job that you want to do, but not the bonuses that maybe you're looking to get along with that job. I'll leave a link down in the description down below to the ASVAB for Dummies book on Amazon. And yes, it is an affiliate link, so if you do happen to buy it from there, it doesn't cost you anything extra by clicking on my affiliate link, but it does help out the channel and help me out. Now, also, if you're not a Prime member too, maybe you should you know, do the little trial, the little 30-day trial kind of a thing, and maybe get the book a little bit faster if you want to. But you want to study for the ASVAB. There are different topics on the ASVAB that is going to determine what MOSs you qualify for. And each MOS has like a minimum score. You may have seen it in some of my MOS Monday episodes, but a lot of these MOSs have a minimum score, but also you have to meet a certain score to qualify for the Army, but also to qualify for bonuses if that's what you're looking for. Now, another option to actually take the ASVAB is actually going to an Army recruiter to tell them you want to take the ASVAB. They have some testing centers you can do so and be able to do it there. And a good idea, maybe even before you even take the ASVAB, is to do some practice ones. You can sometimes find some online. I believe that ASVAB for Dummies book has like a CD, I think, in there where it has some practice ASVAB tests that you can do from that CD-ROM or even inside the book, I believe. So you might check out some different resources for practicing the ASVAB, see what you can score on these practice tests before you go take the real one either at high school or at a recruiting office. But now from there, if you have at least gotten a qualifying AFQT score to qualify for the Army, they don't necessarily look at your scores for qualifying for MOSs. I mean, they probably will help you out and say, okay, yes, it looks like you qualify for the MOS you're looking for, but that mainly comes later in the process. Usually for the most part, the recruiters are just looking to make sure that you at least met their minimum requirements for that AFQT score to even qualify for the United States Army or whatever branch you're trying for. 
Now, like I said, the, the steps could flip-flop a little bit. You could take the ASVAB and go talk to a recruiter, or maybe talk to a recruiter and then take the ASVAB, but let's say part of that step either is next or before that is talking to that recruiter because you want to get their input. You Either whether you've taken the ASVAB or haven't taken the ASVAB, you want to tell them what your plans are. What MOS is it that you want to come in the Army? What is it you want to do? What are you looking to accomplish out of the Army? Ask any kind of questions. If you have questions about how the college works, if you have questions about how different programs work, different schools, if you want airborne. So you're asking all those questions to do a little bit more research now from an army recruiter. A lot of people a lot of times have the fear that you know this army recruiter is just going to lie to me to try to get me to enlist or whatever and I, I can't necessarily say that as a guaranteed false kind of a thing because there might be some individuals out there that are trying to kind of meet like a quota kind of a thing. They don't necessarily make extra pay for meeting this quota but they might get a little bit kind of a you know talking to from their leadership if that recruiting station doesn't meet the goals for that quarter but they don't necessarily make any kind of extra money from you because they gotten you into the army they just maybe sometimes have like a goal that they're supposed to try to meet for that recruiting station and if they don't meet it then you know the leadership might have a talk with them and you know say okay what's going on and everything so sometimes there's pressure from the leadership to meet these goals not necessarily incentives to make money out of you so I can't necessarily say that 100% recruiters aren't going to lie to you because it, it could happen a little bit here and there. A lot of times it's not necessarily a lie, but maybe they just don't tell you about certain aspects. They tell you all the good stuff and maybe leave out the bad stuff. And there are some recruiters that are straight up honest and that's great. If you get one of those individuals that is straight up honest with you and just telling you all the facts, telling you the good, the bad, all that stuff and letting you know up front and you know that really helps you to make that decision properly. So you still want to talk to that recruiter, but along with that, you want to do a little bit of research on your own. That way, if you are fearful that, I don't know if this person is lying to me a little bit just to try to get me into the army because they need to meet this goal they have set for this month or whatever. So talk to the recruiter, talk about all the options you want to do, but then do a little bit of research on your own to see, okay, is some of the stuff this individual is telling me, does that seem like it's adding up from some of the research I'm looking at from GoArmy.com's website, maybe talking to some veterans or some people that are currently in the military, seeing if those are kind of aligning with what the recruiter is telling you. You may not get all of the answers, but you might find some of the answers and find out if it does line up with what that individual is telling you or it doesn't. And I don't even mind helping out a little bit too. If you want to like hit me up on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram, that Chris Chaos. You can shoot me a message, ask me some questions. I don't mind. I don't necessarily have all the resources that a recruiter has, but I might be able to help you out in some areas anyways. So next from there is what you're probably doing once you've kind of gotten it established with the recruiter that yes, I want to join the army and I want to start the process. Then you're probably doing a background check. They have to make sure you don't have some outstanding felonies. You don't have some kind of outstanding things like parking tickets because yes, that does matter. I've had individuals ask me about you know having warrants for a parking ticket or anything. If that's going to affect them joining, yes. So you're going to have to make sure all that stuff is clean. You have a clean background. There are certain minor things that sometimes they'll look past and maybe do a waiver for or don't even care about. But for the most part, they're making sure that they're not you know enlisting individuals into the army that are running from the police and try to get away from the police because they have these outstanding warrants for whatever reason right so they're going to do a background check on you now if you're also not a u.s citizen maybe you just have a visa to be in the united states there is a little bit more of an in-depth background check they're gonna have to do so that process can take a little bit longer than someone who's already a US citizen but even for individuals outside of you know the united states that are coming to the united states with a visa or a green card to try to join the military they still have to go through a background check it's a little bit longer because they need to complete that before they can go off to basic training where sometimes for u.s citizens they do the basic background check and then the rest of it can kind of come along the way as you're starting to go through the process. But now if everything has cleared through that background check, then you're off to MEPS. MEPS is the kind of physical part of the, you know, application to join to make sure that you're physically fit to be able to join. Not in the ways of like you're, they're going to make you do push-ups and sit-ups and run and all that stuff, but they're going to check you out to see, you know, from a doctor to see if you're, you know, going to be healthy enough to go to basic training. Make sure you're not going to have a heart attack on them. Not making sure you have asthma, making sure that you are in good enough condition, maybe your knees and your legs and everything that you can be able to run and do all the physical stuff that is required in basic training and being in the army making sure that you're not going to join the army with some kind of pre-existing condition and then you know get injured in basic training and then now the army is responsible for you because you got injured during basic training when this was actually a pre-existing thing so they're doing all that stuff they're doing even drug tests to make sure that you're not coming into the army hot from you know doing cocaine or marijuana or whatever they do have different marijuana waivers but usually still have to be upfront about that ahead of time before you go off to maps 
So you're just doing a lot of things at MEPS. It's pretty much an all day kind of process of you going and seeing doctors, going to different stations, doing probably some evaluations, some you know eye tests and everything, that drug test and everything. And then finally, once you get through all of it, probably at the end of the day, later in the afternoon, whatever, you're finally sitting down with an individual who is looking at all those results as, as well as the results from your ASVAB to determine, do you qualify for the Army? What MOSs do you qualify for? And then looking at the class dates for upcoming classes for basic training or OSA it depend on your MOS and trying to figure out what aligns with what you want to do and what aligns with the schedule to be able to send you off to basic training or OSIT. And then at the end of the day, if you are you know, confident with something that they're offering you and that's something you want to go for, then you're probably doing some paperwork, signing that paperwork, and then getting a date to go off to basic training or OSIT. And then there's maybe some cases where maybe you don't like what they're offering you. And maybe you want to kind of walk away from it and be like, nah, I'll come back another time, try harder on the ASVAB to get a better score. Maybe try to do certain other things to maybe come back during a time when this MOS is available because maybe it's you know not in demand at this time and it's really hard to get into and there's not slots available. So maybe you to hold off until that MOS is available and that could be a thing too. So some individuals may sign that contract then, some of them may want to walk away and maybe try it another time to get a better score on the ASVAB or wait for the MOS that they want to open up. Now if you're in a situation where you do agree to a contract, everything meets the, the what you're looking for you know, to get into the Army, the job you want, everything, the benefits that you're looking for if you got, wanted a specific school, you wanted a bonus, whatever you know, it could have possibly been, you're signing that contract and everything and you have a date of when you need to be back at MEPS to do the official swear-in and be you know, sent off on a bus or a plane or whatever to get you to basic training or OSIT to start your initial training. And from that day, that first day you take off to go to basic training or OSIT, you're officially in the United States Army. So essentially that is it. That is kind of the breakdown of what you're gonna to have to do for an individual that is interested in joining the Army. Maybe you're curious, what do I need to do first? What should I be doing? What kind of research should I be doing? All that kind of stuff. Maybe hopefully this helps you out. Also additionally, if you wanna know about different things about the Army, I do have a specific playlist. I'll leave a link down in the description for a playlist for videos that you should probably watch before you join the Army, before you take off to basic training, maybe even before you talk to a recruiter, that could help you out. You don't necessarily have to watch all of the videos, but there are a lot of those videos that may help you out to understand the Army a little bit better, especially things like basic training, the day-to-day -day life of the Army, to make sure that you are really sure that the Army life is what you're interested in. Now for my viewers out there that are currently in the United States Army or maybe some veterans out there, I'd love to hear your experience down in the comment section down below. What was your experience like of starting the process? You know, were you nervous? What were you going through your mind? What did you have to do extra to you know, go through the process? There are some people that have to go through extra things because they have to get waivers to be able to get into the Army and other things that they have to do to even qualify for the United States Army beyond just the person that gets a nice smooth ride of simply hitting all the steps and then boom, you got a, a ship date. I've even talked about mine in another video about how I turned down the Army originally and then later came into the Army, so you can look up that video if you want to, but that was kind of my experience with kind of that initial process and you can check that video out if you're interested in it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you show it some love by hitting that thumbs up would you for me. Check out these recommendations right over here, also some links down in the description for social media to follow me on there. I got my PO box, I got some affiliate links, all that goodness. Check out the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos and I will see you next time. See ya.